Well, the time has come to get this crust box Jeep off my trailer, and I'm torn between hauling off to the scrap yard or going further with it. Uh, but in the, the part one comments, it was kind of a toss up, but you guys have voted for going further with it and getting it running. Well, it's, it's kind of in between that and what's wrong with you, burn that thing to the ground, bring it to the scrap yard. And just to recap on the part one, it had been sitting since the 80s and we, we dragged it on out of there. I, I think I said 89 in the video, but after talking to the granddaughter of the, the guy who owned this, this was actually last parked in 1983. And reason one of the reasons it's so salty is because this uh, they had this on the north side of brigantine beach as the story goes and one of the guys uh, was low tide he hit a tidal pole got stuck and then he had to he couldn't get out so he ran to get help his motor was swamped out by the time he got back there was waves crashing over the windshield so that might explain why this thing is so rusty they had brought it home and were able to to get it going again but then parked in 1983. if you think the jeep's in bad shape take a look at the title i told you guys i, I got a title for this one but unfortunately it's in such poor shape that when i went to transfer it they couldn't do anything because the address is actually ripped through and everything i can't find a vin plate either it's supposed to be stamped behind the, the passenger seat it might be underneath it here i'm not sure we'll have to find out but if we can't get a title we can always just have this as a trail cruiser so let's pull this out in the yard see if we can get the engine running a little bit better and maybe moving under its own power would be kind of the goal in this video since all we did before was pretty much fire it up once and that's it oh and hey if you guys got an idea for a name on this let me know comment that down below i was thinking maybe like sergeant crust box or something like that or something stupid oh that was the windshield falling down oops that didn't break dragging the jack here this thing's nice though it's got that quick release and then you can pull it up and lock it back down with these I think we'll start with the pressure washer, give her a little detail, all sorts of sand and mud inside the frame too, and uh, you know, start with that. Find some goodies in here. Uh, some jumper cables, an old machete. And what else? Oh, there's definitely some other stuff in here. Definitely some kind of a nest. Oh, spare tire. Wrench. Wrench. First aid in here. Hmm. Looks like some kind of digging tool, some first aid uh, tape, adhesive tape, first aid cream, Johnson Johnson, and uh, just some, some rust in there. Great idea, rusty metal with rodent droppings all over it. All this rust makes easy work of removing parts. Got plenty of access to all this now. I'm gonna use the plasma cutter and get rid of some of this rusted metal. Turns out this doesn't work so well going through ultra rusty metal because it's not conductive, I suppose, but it's working.
Looking better. I can't believe all these bolts are coming out of here. It's wild. Well, I'm not gonna lie. I went a little ham on it. Everybody on YouTube says I'm my neighbors must hate me. What, what do you guys think? Am I am I a bad neighbor or what? What do you mean? Bad like neighbor. what? We what? should have been around here ten years ago for now, dude. Nah, dude. <laughs> like with all with all like with all the cars and the noise and such. Well, he's, he's all just, part of it. So we either got him on this side, or I got him on the other side. Yeah, man. Well, <laughs> dude, it's ten o'clock. You're revving engines like it's Daytona here. <laughs> uh, so this is what we're looking at. Uh, probably braze the, the gas tank. I'm sure. Yeah, no problem. One of these fuel straps was still good. Yeah, they're rusted through, but... I'm walking around barefoot, so I try to clean up the rusty, terrible metal. I'm not gonna lie, this thing's pretty sweet being able to move it around so easily. Now that we got this body tidied up, super minty, the next priority is gonna be taking the carburetor off. I'll clean that up, see what it looks like, and we gotta get this water pump turning. Maybe get some hoses on here. Yep, these are ripped through. Now maybe a set of plug wires, and then we got to run this engine longer and see if some of that blow by goes by. You, you guys seen how much was coming out of the crankcase? So one guy said you could probably spin a turbo with that. <laughs> so bad. Wow, these flex hoses are tough. The inner liner is still good. There were zero coolant in this thing. This uh, radiator seems to be in nice shape though. Very nice shape actually. Old copper rad. And remember this was hitting the fan. Um, The whole, oh, there's why it was hitting. The entire front cross member is completely rotted apart. And uh, that's the steering box is attached to that. So I guess when I was jerking the wheel back and forth, that pushed the whole thing backwards. Um, so that's okay. We'll just have to weld a piece of something in there. What is this got? It's got a spark plug sitting in here. For I guess that's for if there was a heater core coming off the pump, yeah. Wow, talk about a blocked up rad hose. 
That thing is caked completely. And there's a look inside of the pump. Wow, that is one solid block right there. I'm actually very excited to see the inside of this pump. This is one of the reasons that aluminum can be worse than cast iron in a lot of cases, because it just, when it corrodes, it, it blocks up completely. Do we have everything off? Let's find out. Yes. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, it's so bad. This is seriously just beautiful. I mean, what a piece of artwork. I thought the pump out of the Fury was bad. I mean, it's pretty bad. It's stripped on the shaft. But come on, this thing takes the cake. This is just, a, I'm gonna hang this on the wall. I love it. Look at the detail on there. That's what this looks like to the human eye. What a spectacular display of colors. It's not looking great guys, but I guess let's let's get the <clears throat> water pump housing off. Or is that part of the whole timing cover? Yeah, that housing's all one piece, part of the timing cover. So I guess I'll spray this all down and we'll revisit this. I cleaned up the outside of this car a little bit. Let's take a look inside. I imagine it's not going to be too dirty since she was running all right. <laughs> On the inlet, this has got a real good quality brass pre-filter and looks nice. Wow, look at that. Since 1983, so he must have uh, drained this before they, they stored it. Um, or I don't know what they put in there, but that is incredible looking. I'm blown away. I mean, even the gasket didn't rip taking it off. It's really rare. There's a little bit of gum buildup down here that I'll clean, but this must just be better aluminum than what they use these days. Even the pumper still works good on it too. See when you shoot it, it's pumping it down that tube and then there's a little check valve right here that keeps it primed so it shoots out that hole into this one, out into the carburetor throat, and then gets sucked down the Venturi. Now, let's see what we can do with this cooling system. You see I took the other light off, and these actually double as a locking mechanism for this bar. You just give it a good yank, and it's very convenient. Let's see what it looks like inside this thermostat housing. Not too bad. It's just mainly the aluminum that's it's horrible. I mean, it'd be silly to put it back in, but this thermostat actually seems like it still works. I mean, it's still cooling in here, or just rusty water. So on this cooling system, the hot coolant comes out the top, goes into the top of the radiator, comes out of the bottom of the radiator there, goes in through this crossover tube on the bottom, then comes back into the water pump right here and flows into the block on that side. That's what it looks like anyway. I think we'll just try and pressure wash and clean that all out. got the carburetor bolted back up and then an auxiliary cooling system because again I want to run this engine a little bit longer do some more checks with it the transmission works and all that this just has a little deflector plate down here and a cone going into the thermostat housing that should be good to keep it cool might have ran out of voltage because this battery is low and the alternator is not hooked up. I'm actually shooting some clips right now on this Amp Pro jump starter, putting on the review channel and it's been working really good. Found out why it shut off. The positive wire started rubbing against the exhaust again and you can see it melted the entire 
wire so it, it drained out the battery and just lost lost the, the voltage to run listen to that this little jump pack is great well that's been idling for about 20 minutes now hasn't gotten any louder a little, little rev off here that's just that though and the, the water's coming out warm so we're gonna shut her down and then come up with uh, what we do next Today's agenda, all I want to try to get done is maybe get this clutch unseized from the other brake pedal so we can maybe try to get that going in gear and such when we get it running. But the perfect example of why I always get uh, sidetracked and things take longer is when well, my neighbor was uh, getting rid of this the other day and it still spun, but it was seized up. So I spent like an hour heating this aluminum block and getting this to, to unseize. But look at this now. Now. It rotates and I got the perfect spot to go through this little windmill. I think it's so cute. There's an old well in my front yard that I keep covered up with this Fairbank standard uh, scale platform. I just flattened out the bottoms and I'll drill and tap that with some stainless bolts for it. I got these nice M10s that have washer and lock washer built in. This came off a super jet, I believe. An M10 by one, two, five. Here's the well I'm talking about. Some of you guys have been on the channel a long time might actually remember this. I tried digging this down. But if anybody has any ideas on how to get those big chunks of concrete out of there or a good tool I could just purchase instead of making something like a gr grapple clamping hook or something, let me know. Because I would love to see how deep this thing is. Beautiful. This needs to be a little taller, but that ain't going nowhere. So the clutch pedal it should be locked to the shaft, but this one should not. Uh, I just gotta take this cotter pin out and then I heat this up and smack it off. Oh, uh, no, it's not really taking grease. Let's see if she wants to take anything. good way to get scorching hot grease shot in your face oh, here we go I got it to break loose very cool and with that grease it's much better but I think we'll just pop the brake pedal off since we definitely won't have those anytime soon you see this clutch uh, goes across to this lever right here this lever comes back to this one goes over and then pulls pulls on the clutch release fork right there you see which is moving got the cotter pin out but this plates in a way and has these two half inch head bolts that are severely rusted holding the master cylinder uh into the frame that ain't going that's oh, gonna just break all right Maybe we'll just spray it, soak it till tomorrow. Well, here we are a couple days later. Hopefully we can finally get this moving under its own power. Got a little sidetracked because picked up a airboat and working on that. That's a little bit more exciting than the, the junky Jeep. But here's the parts. Throw this water pump, spark plugs, wires, new hose. I can only find one of them, so I'll probably reuse this one and see if I got something else to replace the, the other lower. Uh, and still need to get a belt and some, you know, trying to not put too much money into this, but so let me, uh, let me go ahead and slap all that on and I will chime back since pretty, you know, pretty boring stuff. Oh, and I didn't get that master cylinder out yet, but, uh, it's actually, the pedal's released from the brake now, so I'm getting excellent clutch action. It actually feels like a nice stiff clutch and working well. When you're putting a new pump in, it's always important to check if there's any holes that pass straight through into the cooling system, because if so, you want to use thread sealant on the threads, or you could actually put RTV on there. I've done that countless times without any problems because otherwise sometimes you end up with coolant trickling between the head of the bolt and the aluminum uh, so that's just a quick tip for you i also always like to take rtv and rub it on the new gasket because i've had these these paper gaskets leak plenty of times so if you once you have anything shy of a perfect surface if there's any imperfections that rtv really helps seal it up good gotta get the nub out of this hose there goes the rest of it 
this is the hole that had the spark plug in it before so i'm guessing that goes to a heater core and then comes back in here but maybe i'll this one's got a condenser block in it looks like which is about to come out so maybe i'll uh, just use a hose to join these two i don't think i'll have a curved hose but might have something that'll work i gotta clean up in here probably gonna end up using one of these red hoses too these old hoses that i got yeah like this this might work fine it's great saving these old radiator hoses from from jobs i mean because look at that that's that's going to be completely fine but yeah put everything back together it's always a great idea to spin it and listen no noises or anything because sometimes these aftermarket parts can be wrong and put it all in there start it up you have a terrible noise oh yeah there's this problem too where the fan almost hits there now that i look at this closer it's actually not the frame because this whole piece is mounted this is on a pivot here like the whole front radiator just pivots out of place so maybe it's maybe it's not pushed all the way back oh yeah look at that it's supposed to be in these okay all right that makes sense all right after getting all these bolts broken loose this is good that's that's a really neat feature i guess that would make it a lot easier to swap an engine in the field without this here fold that all the way down you could hop in here and slide the motor right out without an engine hoist and now with that for further back the clearance is still tight but needs that's that's right where it needs to be look at that used top hose perfect fitment on there after trimming it i did have to use a different one for here too that curved one i had didn't work and check out the lower rad hose so this one's totally not usable because it's you know rusted all through and this one after cleaning it up i can reuse it i just had to empty out all the rusted out broken spring pieces from the inside but and then this is the the crossover pipe so it's actually an old i guess it looks like inch and a half copper tubing yeah there's inch and a half uh sweat it together definitely not factory well that's all back together i'm gonna fill it with water for now obviously not distilled water that way if there's any leaks or other major problems but i think we'll we'll wait till tomorrow to run this he even gets a new rad cap definitely hear a leak couple last minute checks and we'll be cruising probably just through the backyard but uh, i did find out what that noise was under here that was this little plug on the water pump i never tightened down that's just sitting there loose so i'm gonna snug that and then we're all good under the hood i should probably check the trans fluid in the transfer case before running it anymore because well if there's no oil in there could have wiped out the bearings or something it's covered in a lot of oil looks like a fill plug right here and on the transfer case right here. It smells burnt. As long as you got something in there, I'm, I'll be fine. Oh yeah, perfect. And some brown junky oil in there, but there's oil. Guess we might as well check the differentials at this point too. Oh, rusty. But oil. Not a good sign that the plug's all rusty, though. That means the gears probably got rust on them, too. I'm not even going to look in there. We're going to just cross our fingers. Means there was a lot of moisture present. The front diff has a much more burnt smell, but it's up to level. Can't have our fuel can holder folding down on us. I've had these latches soaking. Let's see if we can get these to move. Ah, oh, it popped out. What happened? Almost there. Well, that's that's pretty secure. Nice and tight. Hey. Hi. What you doing? Leaving. Oh, all right. Hi. Hi, babe. About to go for a test drive. Really? Yeah. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. I'm gonna sit <laughs> right on this hump right here. My long legs reach the clutch pedal just fine. This one's going to need some adjustments, but that'll hold. I either have to wear gloves or get rid of the plastic on the steering because, look, clean hand, you grab it once, and, I mean, your hands just get absolutely filthy, and it, like, doesn't come off. It stains it for, for a while. Maybe we could just crack all this right off of here. Surprise it's not rusted through anywhere. I mean, this is a good opportunity to inspect it. Oh, that's much nicer. That's amazing what a little WD-40 will do. Hey, it's an idle. Ever since that 
put that heavier duty spring on the throttle link and just pull it back really tight. I can't believe it's highly as low as it is though. Fan's not hitting the radiator. Cooling system is working. There we go. Man, this thing almost sounds like it's got a cam in it. Well, maybe that's just the beautiful sound of an odd fire V6. Almost sounds like a Harley or something. Here it is, guys. First drive in 39 years since 1983. Will the clutch release? Let's find out. I did whack the bell housing with a hammer a few times. Let's find out if this clutch disengages. I don't even know where first gear is on this. Yeah, it totally did. All right, here goes nothing. Hopefully that's first gear. Uh, all right, we got nothing. Wait a second, what about the transfer case? Maybe that's in neutral. Oh, we're gonna go in low range. Yeah, we were in neutral. This is the low, neutral, high, and this is two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. This one's seized up. But, all right, just looked up the shift pattern too, and I guess it's good that happened because I was in reverse. First gear is actually down to the left, and then two, three. Well, let's try that again and see if the clutch releases this time. So we're gonna go first gear. Sounds like the clutch. Now, she does not release. There's probably all sorts of techniques for breaking a clutch plate that's seized to the flywheel loose, but I'm gonna go ahead and use the one that's used worked for me before. I'm gonna put it in first gear. We're in low range. And now we got the clutch pedal depressed, so I'm gonna give it a little crank. Ooh, I'm getting zapped. No, it's locked solid. Now we're gonna just start it in gear. Let's go. driving Let's see if we get this clutch to break free now now got the clutch pedal to press it for i've been giving it some wax here this time we're going high range high high gear and with that clutch pedal still pressed in we're going to give it a couple nudges wheels are probably just dragging. It doesn't help that it has low compression. You know, I think it might have just broke free. Well, unless it popped out of gear. Oh, I think we're good. Fire it up. Yeah, there it is. It's in gear. So now I'm gonna take it out of gear. Release the clutch. Now we need a seat and some brakes. I was thinking maybe we could do something real hack with this drum brake and get it working. Because I definitely am not doing the hydraulic brakes right now. Brakes are last. Right now we're all gas, no brakes. Well, I believe this might be the most hacked up rigging I've ever done in my life, but we got a floor that's clamped in, a chain that's hooked up to the brake pedal and over to the parking brake, so that works works well. Got adjustability too. And then I saved these 12 inch lags years ago, and I was like, what would I ever use these for? But I saved them, I got them for next to nothing at a thrift store, and now with these fat washers, they're gonna work perfect. Look at that, perfect for screwing into the floor to keep our seat down. Oh, there goes my bit down there. I don't know if you guys can see, but I put them all on a slight angle too, so it gives rigidity and strength. That there is a prime example of how hoarding can pay off. It's just a matter of time, but eventually you'll use all that stuff you save. If not, then your future generation can use it, or it'll be scrap one day, one or the other. Whoever drilled these license plate holes must have been tuned up because that's that's crooked i don't know if this thing's charging or not no 12.3 check on the alternator nothing nothing coming out of there i'll just bring the ampro jump pack put in our storage compartment a good idea to bring one of these too look at that perfect and we got three quarter tank fuel let's go Yeah, 
it's a yeah, it's an old military jeep. Yeah, it's Dude. it's oh, it's almost DOT approved. Yeah, you just get right on top of it and go on. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, I'm just going around the neighborhood real Dude, quick. That is so bad. Look at the leaf on that thing. Go for a shift. Oh, didn't like that. Double clutch it. There it goes. There's second gear. Perfect name just came to my mind as I'm driving the Death Trap Dauntless. Oh boy! <laughs> this thing's ridiculous! Wow, it's got some balls too! Holy smokes! I'm gonna try out these brakes real quick. Uh, yeah, they... They work. We won't go past second gear. Uh, let's go to the car wash. You know what we gotta do is put this windshield down. Breathing in too much exhaust. I don't know if we'll have enough head for the fuel tank down here though. Yeah, that should be enough there. I need to get this back in low range. Doesn't doesn't want to go in low range anymore. I don't know. It's because I'm not sure. I'm sure it's something stupid because it went right in before. Because then I can oh there it goes. Alright, now we can actually use some gears and not. I mean this this gas pedal is not the factory one that, The factory one should be out to right there, and, and this is an aftermarket that's either yeah, full throttle or idle. Very touchy. There it goes. Yeah. Gotta watch where you put your feet down here as you're cruising. not a pressure wash I didn't want this grime going all over my backyard so I didn't hit it before but out of service wind lift well I don't have any change I guess there'll be plenty of time for that in the future Let's see if we can make it back home we got about a half tank now probably not a good idea to go on the main road I think the battery uh, lost its voltage. It's, it started misfiring because it didn't have the alternator. Uh, so it's a good thing we didn't stall out because it certainly would have cranked up. Uh, but it only burned a half tank of fuel too. Oh man, that was awesome. I cannot wait to get more done on this. Let's see how the cooling system held up on that long test drive. Uh, super scorching hot on the top. Lower, much cooler, but still a little bit warm. So that's good, that means it's working. And oh, that belt's about to blow apart, so we'll have to get one of those now that these pulleys have been polished off a little bit. And, oh, so we do still have a little trickle. I'll have to get this, this bypass hose. We'll, we'll have to do a flush on this and get some coolant in there too. Well, I don't know what to say, but I think it's time to wrap up the part two. We made a lot of progress on it. Still a ton of work to be done if we want to get this road worthy going down the highway. We got that, that steering box frame member and it's all rotted out. Need tires, need to do something with the tub. Master cylinder, brake lines, brake hoses, all new slave cylinders and shoes, cut the drums, ton of work. But I think it's worth it. I don't think this Dauntless is ready to die yet. If you guys got any name suggestions for this thing, let me know. But otherwise, probably going with the Dauntless Death Trap, even, even though I'd like to make it not a Death Trap eventually. But with that power to 3.7, it kind of is a death trap either way, with, even if you did have brakes. There will be more, I think. That was a lot of fun. Definitely got to run the exhaust back, but it sounds so good with the straight pipe. It sounds like an old Harley or not quite a V8. It just sounds really, really neat. So maybe we'll, we'll just run straight pipes out the back and or do some dumps with, uh, with butterfly valves to keep it incognito. I think I'm rambling now, guys. So thanks so much for tuning into this video. If you did, any feedback or comments, drop those down below. Hugely appreciate appreciate that and yeah i hope to see you in part three or a future video uh, sorry that i jump around on so much different stuff and probably make a lot more sense if i did just did a whole series and concentrated on this jeep but you know no nonsense no how over out see you next time we just got some new uh, ladies 
are uh, laying hens right now. They got a little bit slow. It's amazing how quick they learn to drink water out of there. There's a couple Rhode Island Reds and then or three Rhode Island Reds and three of these gold laced. I forget what it was, but they all seem seem real healthy. So, whoop, boop. So cute.